morning. Fuck off! Come on! Populating the world that we've created has been a challenge because we have limited funds and we have a shitload of aliens that are meant to be living here. There's meant to be like 1.8 million aliens in the story. There isn't massive amounts of research and development time put into creatures or ideas that the human mind hasn't seen before. A lot of this stuff here, although it's very alien, is still based off a lot of uh, insect and real life anatomy. So I try to cut those kind of corners and almost have, in a way, like a mundane alien in, in a mundane environment, but they're still alien, which makes them interesting. Well, it was a great relationship working with Neil because he really understands when the stuff is working and not working and also what he's looking for. He's very decisive. He knew more than anything else that he wanted it to feel <laughs> and then, you know, put the digital alien in the shelter. What, because each take is different and, and you're in this improv world, it means you have to shoot them simultaneously so that they're bouncing off of one another correctly. So we basically just shoot it the way he wants to shoot it as if it were a documentary and then we would go back and, and remove the actor who was playing the alien and replace him with a CG one. The amount of work for Image Engine is, you know, quadrupled because they have to go in with a moving camera and paint Jason out in his gray suit. And the way that it works is a very multi-layered approach, which is something that I've never done before. So you'll notice when, when I'm wearing the gray suit that my performance is incredibly wooden and very still, and I tend to move in these sort of sine waves of movement. And the reason I do that is not because I'm terrified, it's because the visual effects will get very angry with me if I move too much because then it's much more expensive and time consuming to paint me out. So they rotomate our digital alien over Jason, who's on stilts, so he's the correct, you know, seven foot height. They get all of his, his animation correct. There wasn't any form of tracking, it was, it was all hand animated. Uh, they animate his, his facial expressions. Sometimes additional cameras would be there that are zoomed in on Jay to really get his face and get, get all of the, the nuances of his performance in his face. So they'd animate both of those two things, paint them out, and then just have the digital creature there with Shalto. So it's, it's, it's a lot of visual effects work. Figuring out which option to use and when, when it's best for Jason to be entirely VFX and not even in the shot, or when you want him as reference in his motion capture suit. I was hoping for tennis balls with, you know, here's your eye line. But they don't even do that. It's just once the actor's out, it's like, well, do you see where his head was? Yeah, just look behind there. What do you see? Oh, you see that, that green dot on the shack there, that piece of paint? 
Go look there. Okay, that's your eye line. What's that? Go! Oh! 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 Go! Oh! 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 Go! Hey! 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 Look at that! Get off! Get off! Look that! So that was, that was challenging, that was probably the most challenging part of doing the performances was the times that CJ Jason got pulled out of the, out of the scene and I'm playing to fresh air. Visual effects I feel comfortable doing for sure and I, and I really like being in a visual effects environment and, and working with things that are, that are digital and that you have the ability to kind of refine you know that's one of the things that stresses me out about production is you can't refine things you have a limited schedule and you have the sun setting and you've got like 45 minutes to get the scene or whatever you know it's a stressful environment when do i phone first and then he comes in in the middle of the conversation or just after literally as i hang up my onset approach to dealing with the visual effects and sort of being aware of them Aside from having to paint Jason out and decide which, which shots were clean of him and which ones weren't, I was very aware of the lighting. Well, my work here is primarily what I'm doing with this camera set up here and the computer is that what we do to light, to light the exosuit to make it look really real is we record the environment around us in a 360 degree panoramic. And this camera and lens operation here, what it does is you position the camera and the camera will now rotate around the center pivot point so that when we're taking a 360, all those images line up to create a panoramic view and that the focal point of the camera is always directly in the center of the tripod. So we go three around at 120 degrees and then we do one straight up, which is the sky. And those images are also taken in multiple exposures. So there's about 11 stops in each direction that we shoot. And all those 30, I think it's about 32 images in total, are all combined into one large panoramic sphere that we use then to light the object. So everything around the set becomes a light source. That building that has a certain amount of reflection is a light source. The pole is a light source. Everything becomes picked up by this camera. And then that's what we use to wrap around the 3D object. And that object is lit by an actual image as opposed to computer lights. You know, one of the ways that you'll, that you'll help sell photoreal effects is, is if you give the visual effects artist something that is conducive to being lit in a photoreal way. And then secondly, that you provide them a lighting environment that will help them, will complement, you know, their ability to make it look photoreal. For example, having some sort of translucent jellyfish creature put inside a, a UV black, you know, black light disco environment would not be a good way to go. A better way to go would be to have some sort of, you know, hard surface metallic or just something that, that doesn't absorb light, but that bounces light and put it inside a... Uh, inside a harsh lighting environment, like a directional single light, like sunlight, you'll get a good result and you'll get a clean, hard shadow and it'll look, it'll sit in that plate, you know, in, in quite a photoreal way. So we'll just have to go and... It's always a challenge just for computer animation to get really emotional facial expressions and stuff in the first place. And when, you know, the aliens, most of his face is covered by shell, it's even harder. So getting that kind of of emotional level of performance uh, out of the alien was, was a major concern of mine. But one of the things I think that helps that right from the beginning is if you give the animators as much reference as you can. And in most cases, they were painting Jason Cope out, but they were rotomating his performance. There's also an antenna that we put um, screw into the skull cap. And that's, um, that's to assist the visual effects team. If you have him perform the scene and you have him performing against Shalta and just conveying that level of emotion and the animators rotomate him and then they paint him out, you, in theory, you should have, you know, retained the essence of that performance. But then there's other complicating factors, like his language is completely bizarre and you're reading subtitles, right? So that's another level of separation. His facial features are different. He doesn't have a mouth. He's got a whole bunch of, like, disgusting tentacles. One of the main challenges we had was to make something that looked sort of insectoid and, and also alien, so not exactly like an insect, but sort of gave the feeling of insects, but was uh, alien and then also that could emote and that the audience could relate to. You're only getting 50% of what humans read emotionally, you know, which is, which is the eyes. You're not getting the lower part of the face. So there was definitely a lot of work done in figuring out how those pieces of shell could move together to create the motions. You have to sort of, you know, have something recognizable by humans, even if it's a completely alien creature, 
that they can relate to and realize that that's the emotion they're going to. so i was i was completely stressed out that that we wouldn't be conveying the emotional resonance that needed to happen with that character. but now i'm ok. so you know, there was lots of challenges in different ways between getting the interaction of the aliens with humans and then just getting lots of aliens in there. the most fun for me um, tends to be the finishing touches. I think the most satisfying thing for me would be that Neil sort of conceptualized this completely alternate, you know, reality. It's, it's our world, but it just has this one thing that's different. What I want it to be, and what I hope it's, it's on the rails to becoming, is a science fiction piece that is presented in a slightly more unusual way. It has lots of elements of traditional filmmaking, but it also has some other elements that are a little bit less traditional, and the setting is very untraditional. So all, all I'm trying to do is, is make a film that has all of the sci-fi elements that I really like injected into a slightly twisted version of how we normally see it.